Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Um, here we are again uh, for another episode of uh, Shields Live. Again, thanks for joining us. A little chilly out there, but at least the sun's shining, so it is. Uh, it looks pretty nice. No snow. Anyway, no snow yet, so that's good. Um, you know, just a couple things as we get closer to the holidays. You know, if you if you have your eye on anything, definitely uh, you know get it ordered a little sooner. Uh, shipping's taking a little bit for uh, different things. Uh, so if there's something that you have your eye on, or you know, wish list for uh, hubby, kids, whatever, you know, get it get us get it in there a little sooner to make sure we get it by Christmas. Um, we did do a little bit of in-store events last week. It was great to see everybody. Uh, I was in Davenport both days, but, um, you know, it's been a while since we've been able to have people in. So it was a lot of fun and, and we're hoping to do more of that. So, so keep, keep, uh, keep watching, uh, your emails, things like that. Again, we really appreciate you uh, sharing, liking, um, and commenting on our, on our posts and Facebook. That always helps out a lot. You know, I've got, we've got some people now, I even out my council bluffs, uh, down in Missouri. So, you know, we're, we're really getting out there, but, uh, you know, every little bit helps, um, but again, uh, thanks for joining us. I think Jan's going to talk about the Brother BQ 1350. It's one of our most popular machines, one of our really nice uh, midline uh, quilting sewing machines. It's got a, a lot of nice features. So uh, I will turn it over to her and um, we'll see you back here when she's all done. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How is everybody today? Getting a few people in here, it looks like. Just a second, let me get the banner turned off. And get my comments up here. A few people are showing up. It's always hard in the middle of the day, but this is when both Tim and I are here. So I know a lot of people actually watch um, the video later because I get a lot of views on the video um, later because people are, I think a lot of people are working. And hi, Garnet. So, so we're going to talk about the 1350 today, the BQ 1350. It's a really nice machine. It's one of my favorite machines um, for people that are looking for a nice quilting sewing machine that has, it has a bunch of the upper, you know, features in it, but it doesn't have all. So it's kind of a modestly priced machine. Working on Christmas cards. Hi, hi, Lynn. <laughs> You're working on Christmas cards. Hi, Marcia. Um, so this is such a nice, um, I think it's a very affordable machine because it has a lot of nice features and it gets a, has a lot of nice accessories. So I'm going to show you some of the stuff that comes with it too. Um, so you can, you can see how it works. Plus some of the, the features that I really, really like about the machine. And we're just going to sew a little bit on it and, and show you, you know, we're going to thread it and put the bobbin in and everything like we've done before. But um, I thought I'd also show you some of the cool stuff that it comes with. And then some of the, the specific things that I really, really like about the machine that kind of sets it above some of the, um, the entry, more entry level machines. So, okay. So let me switch the camera over here. Let's see what we got here. Get all of this done. Turn my cam or my microphone on too. All right. Okay. So this is the Brother BQ 1350. This is very similar to the Baby Lock Soprano. I just happen to have the, the Brother on the floor right now. So um, that's why we're doing using the Brother. But the thing that let's let's just do a couple simple things first let's just thread the machine so this is going to be a sewing only machine this is not an embroidery machine it does have a nice selection as you can see up here on the lid you, there's, it has a nice selection of decorative stitches on it and it does have some lettering fonts so it has upper and lower case letters and so and it has like a four or five fonts on it so that's nice if you want to make some quilt labels so it works very well um and the other thing that one of the other things that this machine does that i've always loved is a couple things it has it's got auto tension so there's no tension dial here okay so it sets the tension down here on the screen and then you can adjust it if you need to of course but normally it kind of sets it per stitch so like some stitches may have a four here and some may have a three and a half or whatever so that's that's one thing that's nice about this machine has that has of course speed control which a lot of them do but this is the first machine with the automated up and down for the foot so i have this little button here okay that puts my foot up and down so that's this is the first machine that has that and i really i i've had that on my machine for a really long time so i i love that this one has it because it 
you know, it's just a nice carry around machine too, because it's not a real big machine if you just need a good sewing machine. Um, had needle up and down, cutter, of course. The other thing this one has, because it has the automated foot here, it has the pivot feature. So the pivot feature is this little button right here. And all you have to do is touch it when you turn the machine on. And then this is something I use, and you've seen me use this on my other machine. But this one then, of course, will sew. So I'm going to put the foot down. It'll sew, and then when you stop sewing, the foot comes up and the needle goes down. And then when I start sewing again, it drops everything. So I don't have to touch a lot of stuff. And this machine um, will work with, with, with or without the foot controller. So I'm just using the button here. But I love that pivot feature because it's really, really good for um, chain piecing. So anybody that has the machines with the automated foot that goes up and down with the button here has that pivot. So this little button on this one, you have to touch it, but it looks like a foot with a little needle going down through it. Um, that'll be on some of the bigger machines that have the touch screens too. Okay. So I really like that feature. That's another thing that I really like. And then the last thing, my favorite thing about this machine, and this is the first machine with it, but it has the automatic, um, two things actually, it has the automatic fabric sensor system. In other words, it has the presser foot pressure adjustment automatically. And that's in the settings. So I wanted to kind of start in the settings so you can see this one has some computerized abilities so that you can um, set some things up in your settings. It's this little piece of paper and a lot of the other machines, you know, we've seen embroidery machines and stuff that have this too. But you just touch the little piece of paper. And these are some of the settings that we can set up to make the machine more ours or more personalized to yourself. So one of the things that I do, now this one, in order to go down the little, the little sections here, you have to use a little down arrow. So I'm just going to use this little down arrow and like the initial position, I like mine to come up in the center because I use a piecing foot. So I have it set for the center to change those settings, like right here where the arrows are going side to side, you use these arrows. So like now the needle's over on the left. So every time I turn it on, it would come over on the left. So I'm going to put it back in the center. Let's go down to the, another one and I'll show you a couple of these things. Some of these are not ones we'll talk a lot about right now. But there's a couple things I wanted to show you on here that I really like. So we're going to go down. Some of these are just for the sewing, different things. But then the presser foot pressure is right here. So if you need to have this lower or higher, you can adjust to here. But the presser foot height, well, how far it comes up. But then when we get down to this one on page five, it says auto fabric sensor system. And I have it turned on. When they come out of the box, they're off. So if you have a newer machine like this that you've never gotten into the settings page, make sure you turn this on because we want this on most of the time. There, every now and then I'll turn it off, but it's very rare that I turn it off. And that way it'll adjust the presser foot pressure as you're going over the bumps on different fabrics and so on. So that really helps. And I find that the machines just feed so much better with that. So I, that's what, like one of my favorite things. Um, and then this one also has a free motion mode. So you can hit, you can turn that on when you're ready to do the free motion and it sets things at a height and stuff that is better. And you can adjust these things a little bit here. Um, so this is, this also has the free motion mode, which is nice. And the, most of the bigger um, uh, touchscreen machines have that free motion mode on them too. So this is the first one that has that also. So I kind of like that. All right, let's see. And let's see if there's anything else. So we can change the buzzer, the brightness, but this is our little settings page. And this is sort of the, um, oh, and just so you know, I had, I had a customer tell me this. There's a little thing called reinforcement priority. And if you turn that on, some of the, some of the tie offs aren't quite the same as if it's off. So I usually leave it off <laughs> just so you know, that was one thing that was kind of, we had a hard time deciding on something why it wouldn't work and then as soon as we got that turned off it worked so um that's something i usually leave off just so you know all right let's see and then you can change the input um sensitivity on the screen i have a little trouble hi jan i have a little trouble with my fingers working on touch screens so sometimes i have to make mine a little more sensitive to to get it to work and then of course you can speak a different language if you'd like for the day 
Okay, and then the version is there. So the, these are the things that I usually kind of show people in the settings. The most, the main thing is I like that. I like to change that. Um, the uh, initial position, I'd like it to be in the center. And then I want that automatic fabric sensor system turned on. So that's the two things that I always do in the first time I set these up on the, on the machine, on the, on the floor. So, okay. So then when we're done in here in our settings page, we're, I'm just going to click. Okay. Okay. So then we got those two things turned on that we want. Um, and let's just thread the machine. I want, I mean, this is similar to most of the other machines, but you know, we'll just, we're just going to thread it. I'll, uh, I've got my thread here. You want to start with your thread underneath. Okay, under the toilet paper roll, that's what I always tell people. Okay, so we're just going to thread the machine and it goes, everything's labeled and you're going to follow the solid lines. So one, two, it's a little different than some of the machines, this little part is. And then three is over here. You see, make sure you can see what I'm doing. Um, four is down, up and over for four, I should say. Three is down, up, up and over for four. So there's a little um the little lifter is in here so you kind of have to pull your arm from the right to the left pull it over and down okay and then i'm going to go down here i'm going to pull the camera down so you can see there's a little there's a little um a little guide right above the needle there you probably can't see it very well okay and now at this point what i like to do when i go get ready to thread my machine actually thread it because it has a nice automated needle threader which is also awesome i'm going to put my foot down with the button up here okay now i have a little tension right here so it's a little easier and then i'm going to go ahead and put my needle down and my needle up sometimes if i carry them or if they've ridden in the car they just come out of the box you need to use needle up and down before you thread that way you're not going to break your needle threader okay so i'm going to go across this little notch right here to number seven okay and it pushes into number seven which is right here Okay, then there's a cutter on the side, which is number eight. And I'm just going to, and you probably can't see if I turn it over around this way, you can see it. See the little knob here? This is number nine. So we're just going to push it down until it clicks. And then we got the th machine threaded down here. Okay, so pretty much threads like the other machines, but it does have the, it doesn't have an automated button up here for the threading. It has, but it has the foot. Okay, so let's put the, the let's put the bobbin, in, bobbin in as well. And I'll show you how to wind a bobbin. So when I put the bobbins in, the thread is going, you're going to make the letter P, okay? Like this. In front of you, the thread's going to come off the left, make the letter P. And then I'm going to lay this in the bobbin case, like that. And then I'm going to follow the little arrow, okay? So there's a little tension unit right underneath this little gray thing right here. I'm going to put it under there, and I like to put my finger on top, pull it around the little guide and cut it off right here okay and then you do not have to pull your bobbin thread up with this machine you can just start sewing now if you need to pull your bobbin thread up what i do is i go around that little horn there i go around this way and follow my little arrow okay and then i just leave this little tail down here i don't cut it off because then it's easier to get a hold of your thread when you go to to pull it up okay but i'm not i don't need to pull it up today all right so to wind a bobbin, I've got a bobbin up here that we can wind. We'll just unthread the machine and we'll wind a bobbin, okay? Now this one is a little different. I'm hoping I can get the camera up here enough. So this is the thing that, that seems to be um, the most confusing for people. This one has a little different bobbin winder. So I'm going to start with these dashed lines and I'm going to go one, two, just like I was going to thread it. One, two. But then if you go up here, Okay, this little unit is the tension unit for the bobbin winder. So I'm going to go, and this is a lot like most of the smaller machines, just so you know. So if you if you have like a Presto or if you have a PS700 or 500, the bobbin winder is going to be very similar to this. So the trick is with this, you need to go behind this thing that's sticking up. Okay, so go behind it with the thread. And then you're going to come down between that and the little round thing. So I've got the thread in between there, and then I'm gonna pull it underneath that, that round thing, because that's the tension. You can see I've got some tension here now. Then, and if you look at the picture, it shows you going that way, but it doesn't really show you pulling it under that little round, little 
post at the top, okay? So it's very important it's under that because that's actually the tension, okay? Then we're going to go over here to the bobbin winder, and you can see there's another picture here. I'm going to wrap the thread around the bobbin clockwise, maybe six or seven times, okay? And then I'm going, then there's a cutter down underneath. So you can see there's a little picture right here, and I'm just going to cut it off, and I'm going to push this in then, okay? Because you can see it pushed in towards the little the little stopper, and then I'm going to go down here, and it makes my my start stop button instead of green, it's orange or kind of yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and start that, and that will wind my bobbin. This is your speed for bind, winding your bobbin. Then. So sometimes you don't need to, um, you don't want to wind too fast. So I don't wind more than about oh about three quarters of the way up. You know, if you wind too fast, sometimes it has, causes problems, especially depending on the thread, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and stop it with the same button, okay? I wound about a half a bobbin, all right? And then I can push this out, pull it off, and then there's those little cutters there. I can just cut my thread off right up here like that. And then I'm ready to put my bobbin into my machine, okay? So if you have problems with your bobbin thread, like going under this little gray thing, Okay, sometimes all the thread will go underneath. I think we've all had that happen. That means it's not in the tension over here, just so you know. So you need to pull it into that tension so that it's really in there, okay? And then you can also take this off. So I just pulled it up. You can take it off and get all that thread out from underneath there. Instead of having to take tweezers, just pull it up. It's a little tight, but just give it a, give it a tug and it'll come right off, okay? And push it on and then it goes on and then it kind of slips down in there like that, okay? So that is the bobbin winding, the threading, and putting the bobbin in. So that's that we've done this before with some of the other machines. So it's very similar. Okay. All right. So let's talk about, I'm going to go ahead and thread my machine again. Let's talk about some of the cool stitches and stuff. And I'm going to show you some of the accessories too. So we're going to, going to thread this again. Just follow the numbers. Okay. Down here. This is the hardest part is getting in the little thing above the needle here. And put my foot down, needle down, needle up, make sure everything's in the right place, across, cut it off, and then push down the, the button till it clicks. Okay. So let's talk about how we change the stitches on this machine. It's pretty cool. There are several different menus on this machine. So when they turn on, it comes up in this kind of basic menu, which is, you can see this little light is on right here. And it's the, the, the little 10 buttons, number key buttons right here, okay? So like the first two buttons are straight stitch with a needle on the left. Now remember, we set it up to come up with the needle in the center. So mine says number three up here, which is gonna be like three and four. Okay, so that's the straight stitches in the center, and that's usually what I use. And then five and six are going to be your zigzag stitches. Seven and eight are the straight are the stretch stitches. So seven's like the straight stitch, straight. <laughs> that's a hard one to say. Straight stretch stitch, and then the eight is going to be the zigzag. That's a stretch stitch. Then we got a, a blind hemming stitch, and then like a three point. Um, zigzag down here. So, it, you know, instead of just going across like this, it goes, it'll go one on the outside and then in like this, it goes like this. I use that for elastic a lot. So that's a good one for that. Okay. But if you want to get into the different um, menus, there's lots of other stitches on this machine. And the other thing that this machine does, that's really cool. If you do some mending and stuff is that it will sew sideways and um, in with a zigzag and a straight stitch. So it's that's a really cool thing. So let, let me show you that real quick. We're going to look at that and it's in the, the other another menu. So to get into these menus that are up here and the stitch I'm referring to, you might not be able to see it too well, but the stitches I'm re referring to are these right here. And it says that the straight stitch going backwards is 92 going to the left is 93, going to the right is 94, and going straight down is 95. So let's go to the left or the right. So I need to get into, let's say, 93, okay? So I first have to look at the little menus that are up here. And I, I'm sorry if you can't see terribly well. It's a little bit dark up there. So there's a little button right here, and it looks like 
the menu and there's one here, one here. And this is the menus you need to be in to get to these stitches. So this one looks like a straight stitch, a zigzag, and a buttonhole. So that's what we where we need to be. So I'm going to touch this button first to get into those menus. Okay. And then I'm going to choose the, the stitch I want, which is 93. So I'm going to just type in 93 with my little touchpad. And it says I'm on number 93, tells me what foot to put on. Now I don't have the end foot on yet, so I'm going to show you how to change that foot. It tells you on the machine what foot to use. Okay. So the end foot is the decorative stitch foot. And it is right here. And these are all labeled. And we went through all of these feet in a different um, in a different video on Shields Live. So I think I called it all those feet. So um, you can go back and go watch that if you have need specific questions about the feet. So here is the end foot. So I'm going to go ahead and to change the foot, I've got the end foot. There's a little button on the back here. Okay, I'm going to push that and then I'm going to put this foot on. And I'm just going to drop the I'm using the auto button up here and I'm just going to drop it down on top of it. Got to get it. There we go. Get it lined up. Okay. So we got our end foot on. We've got the right stitch. And so it's going to be a straight stitch going to the left with this one. So this is cool because this machine then will also have some decorative stitches that are larger because it's so sideways. So I'm going to go ahead and just start the machine and it, it's going to sew sideways. So let's say we had a patch to put on something and we couldn't really get it turned to go all the different directions. So now if I wanted to go straight down, that is number up here, it's number 95. So I'm going to type in 95 on my touch screen over here. And now the, the machine's going to go straight down. Okay. But now I want to go back this way. So that one up here says, when I'm going to the right, it says to type in 94. So I'm just going to type 94. And now I can go back this direction. So this is nice when you're trying to do some, some mending or like maybe applying a patch on something that you have trouble getting it to turn the right direction. Okay. Like that. And then I want to go backwards. So backwards was number 92. Isn't that, isn't that cool? And it's on most of the machines. Like Nancy, you have, if you have an embroidery, do you have the embroidery only or you have an Altair, right? So you should have this on yours. So this is on this machine, it's 92. So I'm going to type in 92 and then it's going to go back. Isn't that a cool little feature? So I kind of got off a little bit here. So I need to go back to the left again. And that's number 93. So I can meet up again. There we go. So I can meet back up with where I started, okay? So that is a cool feature, and this is one of the first machines. Yeah, the Altair has it, but you're going to actually have a tab because you have a touchscreen on yours. So you'll have a tab that will have those. So if you look on your on your tabs on your sewing screen, there's going to be one that has the little arrows kind of going like this, and it'll be on that tab that you can do that. So that's a really cool feature for when you're doing stuff, especially if you can't quite get it in the machine the way you want and you need to go sideways, okay? So that's some of the stitches in that particular menu. The other one that I use a lot in this menu, I wish I could get it just a little closer. My camera won't let, you, let me get too close. There's some in here that are for the piecing and quilting. So this is kind of a nice quilting machine. So let's talk about some of the quilting stuff that comes with this. It's really, it's part of the quilt club series and so they give you a lot of stuff for quilters and some extra equipment also so one of the stitches i use on this machine in this menu a lot is number 29. so i'm going to type in 29 down here on my little keypad and then with 29 i can do my quarter inch seam it tells me over here on the screen to use the j foot so this is the um, this is the, the foot, the way that I teach a lot of my classes, I teach with using the quarter inch with this foot. And I, so I use this a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and put the J foot back on. And then with this foot to get my quarter inch seam on the edges of my fabric here, line up my fabric. Okay. Put my foot down 
And then I'm going to run my, my needle has slightly moved over to the left, or I'm sorry, to the right. And then I am going to run my edge of my foot right along my fabric here. And that's a quarter of an inch. And that's a very accurate quarter of an inch. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit since I'm not using a foot controller. Okay. Oops, sorry, I got a little off because my camera got in my way. Okay. Don't 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 watch the end of it. There we go. So this is a very co accurate quarter of an inch. And then if I need a scant, I can just just tuck the fabric under the foot, and then I get a nice scant quarter inch. And I find this very very accurate. I like it because I can um, just use my J foot and not have to change the foot. But this machine comes with a lot of nice quilting accessories with it. So this is a good time for us to talk about that. Um, you get some of the things that you need as a quilter if you want to change your foot. So like one of the feet it comes with then, these are all extra feet that like the one that I took out of this box are the kind of general ones that we talked about in that other video. So these are all your kind of your normal kind of... Um, uh, garment sewing feet and standard feet that come with the machines um, in this little box. But then this one comes with some of the quilting stuff. So this foot is a piecing foot. Okay. And we've talked about, we did a whole video on the quarter inch seam as well. So um, that I talked about this foot. Now this one's a little bit, this one's a full quarter inch. So it comes with this, but that it comes with this foot. Okay, so there's one of the things. The other thing that it comes with is a walking foot. So this this is a fairly, you know, a, this is one of the little more um, expensive feet, this walking foot. So this comes with the walking foot because it has this nice quilt package. So here's our walking foot that comes with it. The other thing it comes with is if you want to free motion quilt, it comes with three free motioning Feet. And because it has that, remember we talked about in the setting, it has that free motion mode. It has these two feet, which are really nice. I do better with these because they're stationary. These feet do not hop up and down when they, when they, when they uh, work. So I do better with this. I like this foot for free motioning because it doesn't feel as jerky for me because it doesn't hop up and down. So with the free motion mode, because it has that, you can use these. And this is an echo foot. So like if you want to do quarter inch echoes, it has little quarter inch marks on the foot. Okay, so these are the two stationary feet. And then the, the other foot that comes with it is the hopping foot. So this one does hop up and down. This one has the little spring in it, you know, and it goes up and down. Okay, so this is more of a traditional uh, foot. And this is the nice one that has the C opening. And, and you can really see through it. So this is this is a nice little package. So these feet all come with it also. Okay, so these are all quilting feet. Now, the other thing that I love as a quilter that it comes with, this is something, you know, it comes with a lot of extra stuff. This, this machine's very well equipped. So this one also comes with, as a quilter, lots of times I want to use a straight stitch foot. So this is a straight stitch foot that just has a single hole in it. And then it comes with the straight stitch plate. So you can see there's no, it's not a zigzag plate. This is just for straight stitching. Okay. So a lot of the older machines, you know, were just straight stitch. And this one has a plate that you can, and that helps a lot if you're having a little problem with like the edge of your, your fabric going down into your needle plate. But um, so you can put the straight stitch plate on. So this comes with it. So this didn't used to come with this machine. I thought that was so neat that they added it because they added a few new things um, in the last couple of years. The other thing they added that I just really like, because I use a lot of those fat, those threads that are, you know, they don't have a cap on one end. So this machine comes with the two spool thread stand. And so what you do, I'm just going to show you how this works. So I'm going to take this off. See if I can get it off. Sometimes I have a little trouble getting them off. So I got to stand up. Okay. You just kind of push in. Okay. And it comes off. And I then what I do with this is I leave this down here, either in front or in back of the machine, because it has all the, the, you know, the numbers I need for my stitches. <laughs> okay. And then this fits on up here with the name. 
or here back and this fits on up here so this comes with this so that is a very nice way to um, use those especially like orophil and some of the pima cotton threads are um and i even put this thread up here it's so rare i actually lay a thread down on on my machine i always use a, a thread stand so i like that and then it comes up over the little pole up here so this comes with the machine okay so that's one of the nice things as a quilting machine it comes with so let's talk about a few other stitches first so let's look at some of the other stitches so we can look maybe you can see this a little better now with it off the machine get this laid down here and pull the camera down a little bit there we go so these menus then so there's another menu here that says it looks like a little leaf one two and three so the next menu on this machine the little leaf has it's like a toggle switch so if you hit it one time and it's going to say okay to cancel the current pattern and that's okay we're going to hit okay down here so now it says like the leaf one so this is the first one so then i'm in this menu here to use these decorative stitches so there's some really pretty decorative stitches in here let's try one let's do 20 let's see let's do 26 26 is really pretty so let's do type in 26 and then it tells me what foot to use so i need to use the end foot again so let me grab that end foot out of here again so it is important that you pay attention to this letter because if you don't sometimes you can break your needle or you could even break a foot so it is important to watch that letter on the machines okay and so let's do a little decorative stitch this one's really pretty so this one has some nice decorative stitches on it and i use decorative stitches like for quilting sometimes or i use them in small oops sorry i just hit my there we go okay so i'm going to drop my needle and then let's do this decorative stitch so you can kind of see some of the decorative stitches and you can see it goes back and forth so what i do to keep them straight is i try to keep the bottom of my fabric straight because it's going to see it's going sideways because this machine's so sideways it can do bigger stitches so you kind of have to let it do its thing try not to let it drag and i watch the bottom to make sure that it's straight that's how i keep it straight it's looking good this is a, that's a pretty stitch so we'll do a couple so you can see what they look like but that's how you get into the different menus so i'll show you one in the next menu too let's try to get into this last one there we go all right so let's stop it there we'll cut the thread and it has the cutter that's an awesome feature okay so there's our little decorative stitch isn't that a cute one it even had like satin stitches in the center of it but this is a little bit wider one and because you noticed that it was sewing sideways then on this one okay so that's how we got into the first leaf um, menu on here and if i touch that same button the second time now it says the leaf and two next to it and we can type in a different number so here's some different ones that are in here. So then I can, let's say I want to do, oh, the hearts are cute. So let's do number 14. So we'll type in 14 and hit OK. And, and it's going to bring up my number 14, my little hearts. Okay. So that would be in this next menu. So let's do some hearts. Sometimes I just don't do the, the decorative stitches enough. They're actually really fun to sew out. And they look really nice on quilts and like mud rugs and like little small borders and stuff. I mean, I do quite a lot of the decorative stitches. Okay. And that is in that second decorative stitch menu. So here's the little heart. Don't those cute? Don't those be cute on like a little doll dress or a little girl's dress? Okay. And then to get into the third one, See, there's a third one that says leaf three. So I'm just going to touch that same, same one again. And now it comes up here on the screen as the leaf in three. And then you go into this one and you can decide which stitch you want. So this one has some different decorative stitches and straight stitches. And sometimes they repeat the stitches. 
so that you don't have to go in and out of the different menus to get to the different stitches. So they, most of them have a, a lot, actually not all, but a, several of them have also straight stitches too. So you don't have to go keep going in and out of different menus to get to a straight stitch if you need it. Okay, so you can see, and then like all the buttonholes are really awesome and they're all over here. And then this machine also has the sew the button on stitch. So this is the, the one that you sew your buttons on with the M foot. So that has all of those. And then that's where those um, sideways sewing stitches were. So these are, this has got a very nice, you know, a very nice arrangement of stitches on it. Selection, I should say. Okay, and then to get to the lettering, so let's say I wanna type my name. So here is, I'm gonna hit the letter A, which is where all of the different stitches are. And there's different, um, and this is also a toggle switch. So um, there's different fonts. So like this is kind of a plain font. If I hit it again, then I get a, I get more of a um, uh, cursive font. I hit it again. It's an outline font. If I hit it again, it's um, it's like the um, the ones for the, the fraternities and sororities, okay? The Greek alphabet. And then if I hit it again, they finally put some Japanese letters on here. <laughs> so it's a Japanese machine. You know, they finally put some Japanese letters on. I thought that was kind of cool. Hit it again. There's another font. Okay, so there's like four, four or five fonts on here. So let's try the little cursive one. I like that one. And I'm just going to type in, and it tells us what the letters are. So let's say I want to type in Jan. I have a short name, so it's nice. So number 10 is my is my J, okay? And then I want to do a lowercase a, which is number 27. So I'm going to type in 27. Oops, second here, I don't think I quite got it. Let me hit the clear button, and we'll start over. Got the J. Let's just clear it. There we go. So let's clear it. I think we got the letters we want now. So let's go. So J was number 10. So we'll do 10. I just needed to hit the clear button. Okay. And then I have to hit the OK button. Sorry on this one. And then I'm going to do my A, which is 27. Okay. And then I'm going to do my lowercase n, which is number 40. Okay. There. So I got my three letters of my name. And it tells me to use the end foot as well. So let's just sew out some letters so you can kind of see. And you can make your quilt labels this way. What I do when I do quilt labels with the letters is I like to like draw a line to help me keep things straight. Now this one's a little cool, uh, cool lettering font because it kind of has a satin stitch in it too. But it's more of a cursive font. They're about a half inch, so you can't really change the size of them. So if you notice over here while this is sewing, that these are grayed out and that means you can't change the size for the other stitches you usually can so a lot of the other stitches can so we're going to cut that off and there's my letters so these are really pretty and these these work really great for all kinds of stuff and um i had a gal that that did like a she was doing a banquet at the university and they wanted um iowa hawkeyes on the on the little the little bows on the little centerpieces and so she did all this with her machine it looked really cool so that that's that's a really good way to do it okay so the other thing i wanted to show you is okay so let's talk about the pivot again i'm going to put my j foot back on so the pivot is one of my favorite things. So this little button, we talked about it and I turned it on over here. Okay, so let's go back to, I'm gonna go back to the main menu. So I'm just gonna hit that little top button again and hit okay. And I'm just gonna go back to a straight stitch on, in the center. Okay, so that's number three. These are the buttons that show, that allow us to change the length and the width of the stitches. So this is the width. And when you're talking about width, when it comes to straight stitch, that means the needle placement. So as I move these side to side, that means that the needle is moving back and forth, okay, with a straight stitch. This is the length of the stitch this way. So 2.5 is kind of a normal stitch. And then if you want it longer, you go up, okay? If the little black box is around it, that means that's their default for that particular stitch, 
Okay, so that's what those are. And then this is your tension. I normally just leave it be. Wherever it sets itself, that's where I leave it. So this one set at four. You can change it with these buttons if you need to, but I normally just leave it alone. But I wanted to show you this pivot. So what I use the pivot for is, is often for piecing. And um, oops, let's say, and actually let's go to that other piecing stitch then, because I'm going to go down to this menu. And I think it was number 29. So type in 29 again. So that my needle's over for my quarter inch over here. And what I use this for is piecing a lot. So I love this because then I can go down like this. I've got it set on right here. I just turned it on. And then I'm going to, let's pretend that this is a, some blocks and I'm going to start putting other blocks in. So I'm going to start my, my uh, stitching here. Okay. And I'm not going to sew as fast. Okay. And let's say I've gotten to the end of my block and I need another block now. So then I can take this right up to here. So let's pretend this is just another block and there, this is gone. Okay. Or we can just flip it this way. Let's pretend. And then I can flip it up there just right to the needle and then I can start sewing again because I can get that thread, that fabric right up to my needle, okay? And let's say we have another block we want to put in there. Let me just slide this right in. Okay, so the, the pivot feature is wonderful for, for that. And it's also then, of course, when you're trying to do corners. So let's say we need to do, we're doing binding. We have to go around the corner for the binding. See, I've got the foot up, the needle's down. And that's why I leave my pivot feature on all the time. I really like it. And then I can go across. Now you can see I'm going through quite a few layers of fabric. And that automatic height adjustment is helping me to go through those thicknesses. Okay. But the pivot feature is something all you have to do is just touch that button. You don't have to do anything really to make it work. It just automatically works. Just turn it on. And if you have one of the touchscreen machines, it's going to be, you know, it's going to look the same, but it's going to be on the screen. All right. So what do you think of that? I wanted to show you some of the other cool stuff that comes with this. Okay, so we talked about some of the some of the quilting things that come with this machine. Um, we also get the extension table. So this this is something that everybody just loves because if you're doing some free motioning and different things, this comes off, and then we can use our our um, extension table. So the little feet come up in here. And this comes with the machine instead of having to buy it separate. So this one has a lot of nice stuff, and this just slips right on here like that. And then we've got this beautiful table and with all this room on it. So that's one of the other things that comes with it. Comes with an extra spool pin so that you can put it up here on your bobbin winder. It kind of fits up here on your bobbin winder. And that's for if you want to do double needle work, because a lot of a lot of things that are fun to do are double needle. And you can um, you can put this up here and put the second spool of thread up there, or you can just put it on the thread stand, one on each side that comes with the machine. You don't have to use this. So this that comes with two different ways. The other thing that as a quilter I love is an open toe foot. So it comes with this real nice open metal open toe foot. So this is some of the extra feet that come with it that don't come with a lot of the machines. And the other thing that I really like as a quilter is the little, um, you know, with the walking foot, I often want to do like straight line quilting. And this helps me keep my quilting even. And so I can put it into the little hole back here like this, and then I can adjust where I want it. And then as I'm using my walking foot, I can just leave this down and then I can I can use this to help me keep my lines um, equal distant. Okay, so that comes with it too, because most time those you have to buy those separate. And then there's some garment feet. Um, I actually do use this sometimes for quilting too. This is this is a um, this is a stitch foot. You know, like a, it's like a stitch guide foot is what they call it with all the little dots on it. So it has all these little lines. I don't know if you can see it. And I use this sometimes when I'm quilting to help me stay, like if I'm doing real close lines, I use this to help me, okay? And then I, I do quite a little bit of like other garment sewing and, and I make home deck items and stuff. And this is like one of my favorite feet. And this does not come with a lot of the machines. It didn't come with my embroidery machine. And I just love this. So this is the, the, the nicer zipper. This is kind of the old fashioned zipper foot but it's wonderful for piping. So if you wanna make pillows or like Christmas stockings, anything you wanna put piping 
on your on your quilts if you want to put piping in your binding this is the foot you need because then you can get real close um, right up to the edge of the bike the piping okay so this one but and it's also a zipper foot so i use it for both but this one comes with it and then the other one that i use a lot is this is a teflon foot because i sew on vinyl quite often like with bags and different things or with leather this also works well for leathers because i make doll shoes and you have to sew on leather so this is a teflon foot so that comes with it too so we give you a couple more um like like general or or garment sewing feet as well so that's just look at all the different feet it comes with it just comes with a lot of accessories comes with a knee lift so this machine has a knee lift so sometimes i use it and sometimes i don't it's kind of a little hole down here if you can see it there's a little hole right here okay and this little lift goes in there and it's something that you can push with your knee i didn't get it out of the box i'm sorry but you push this in and then you you can lift your foot it's especially nice if you free motion with that so that's something else that works really really well um let's see let's talk about a couple of the other buttons on the machine before we say goodbye um as like i said these are the different menu buttons and we talked about those okay this machine has saving ability also and that's one thing that i really love about this the the electronic the um, computerized machines have this so you can see right here that i have this this is my piecing stitch and you can see that this says 2.5 on it right now and there's not a black box there so that means that that is not the default setting for this particular stitch so if i want to get back to the 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 um default setting if i hit this little button right here it looks like a kind of a piece of paper with lines on it that is the like the default setting button and if i touch that it went back to the de default setting which is 2.0 well that's pretty short for me when i'm piecing so i like to i like to piece with 2.5 because i make lots of mistakes and i have to rip a lot so 2.0 is very short so i like to leave it at 2.5 and every time the stitch comes up i want it to come up at 2.5 so this one resets everything the one above it with the like it's kind of like a looks like a uh, like a home plate <laughs> sort of with an arrow in it it's like a it's like a diamond with an arrow so i'm going to touch this button and if you see up here now it says saving so this machine has saving ability so let's say i go back to a different stitch and i'm going to go back to my 29 that i was using so if i type in 29 now that's my piecing stitch look it went back to 2.5 so what it did is it saved that setting so the other one that i use a lot at a certain setting is my zigzag because i zigzag my binding on so i'm going to go back to my basic um setting my basic um stitches here with this button okay so now we're back there again and if i want let's say i want my zigzag stitch to always have the same setting that i use for my um binding i like it to be narrower than 3.5 so i'm going to take my little button here and put it down i put it at 2.0 and i like the length to be 1.4 and now i'm going to hit the save button again and it saves it in the machine. So every time I touch that button, so I'm going to go back to five, just to show you, and then here's six. And there's that setting that I set. So that is a really, really nice feature because then you don't have to reset those settings every single time you try, you turn on your machine. Okay. Um, that's one of the things I like about this machine. The other thing I like is some of the decorative stitches are really pretty if you turn them over or even not decorative stitches sometimes let's say we're doing a um we're doing some um applique and i'm in this first menu here and it's this one here so i'm going to touch this button first and it was number let's see i want to go to number 38 so i'm going to type in 38 okay so here's my applique stitch but let's say i can't get it the way I want it, I need to flip it over. I need to flip the little the little thing over. So if I touch this button, 
that looks like a, the little triangles, that's going to mirror it. So I'm going to touch that. And look, see, now it's mirrored over. Okay? And if I, if I touch it again, it'll go back. So that's a cool button that's on this machine. And then the other thing I like to do is, um, it, can you see the little, the little, um, the little hearts here? And this is the way for all the machines, just so you know. You can see there's a, a, a heart and a half. Okay, so if I touch this button here, okay, there's only one heart now, and I'm going to go back to my decorative stitch. Let's go back to the decorative stitches. So that's the little the little leaves, and let's go and let's pick a couple of these. So let's say I want these leaves, number 27. Okay, it's just going to do. I'm going to hit this button because I wanted to just do one pattern of those leaves. So I hit the button with the little hearts down here. Okay. And I want to just do one because there's just one right here. So it's just going to do one of them, one pattern. And then I would like some that look like flowers. So let's see. How about number 40? So let's try number 40 now. Okay. And then there, it'll just do one flower. Well, that's cool. So I've got leaves and flowers. Well, then I just wanted to keep going and doing leaves, flowers, leaves, flowers, leaves, flowers. So I'm making my own stitch now. So if I go back down here and hit that same button again, like this, look, leaves, flower, leaves, flower, leaves, flower. That's how it's going to go. So that's really kind of a neat little thing to do to make sequences. It's like a sequencing button. And you can do this and then you can make all your own special decorative stitches by using like one pattern and then another pattern and then making them a sequence. So that's really cool. I like that, that button. And then this one down here actually has you start at the beginning. So let's say we're doing two borders and we want it to start with the same part of the stitch at the top of each one of those borders. If you touch this button, it'll take you back to the beginning of that pattern. So after you end it, it may not end at the very end of this pattern. It may end in the middle of it somewhere. But I want it to start on the other border with the same sequence. So then if I hit this button, it'll start at that same point again, the beginning point again. So it is kind of cool to have that available. So I don't use that one as often as I use this one and make sequences. Okay. So that's one of the things that's in there that's really cool. Um, and the saving button is like one of my favorite things because I love to be able to save um, settings so I don't have to keep setting it over and over and over again whenever I do it. Okay, so I think Tim's with a customer, so we may be just, I will be, you and I will just be saying goodbye. But this machine, this machine also has, this is nice if you're having to do some stuff and you're worried about your fingers. This has a little lock button. It says use the presser foot lifter button to lower the presser lever. Okay, we can do that, the presser foot. And then when I hit this, now all of these buttons, okay, all of the buttons over here, all these buttons are locked. So you can't accidentally put a, a needle through your fingers. So that is kind of a nice feature <laughs> to have. I've, I've done that before when I was changing a needle. It's like, whoops, I touched something and, and the needle came down on me. So this is a nice little feature to have. So this one has a couple of extra little things. So because of the automated foot. Okay. So this machine is the BQ1350. Um, this is the brother. And the baby lock version of this is called the Soprano. So these are really, really nice machines that have some nice accessories that come with them. For the quilter, it's not a super duper heavy machine. So it's a nice one if you need it to, for an extra machine to carry or just want an extra sewing machine without giving up all of the stuff like on your big embroidery machines. So I, this is this is one of my favorite machines. So, okay. So I think I'll, I, I'm gonna say goodbye. I can hear Tim's out there with a with customer. Give me a second here. Got to find the camera. And we can say goodbye for today. And if you have any questions, go ahead and and uh, get back to me at the at uh, you can email me and get through, get me through Facebook, YouTube. <laughs> OK, and if you have any questions about the BQ 1350, I'm not allowed to give prices over the um, over the Internet. 
So you can give us a call. And, and if you're interested in a machine like this, um, you can give us a call and I can tell you more about the pricing and that type of thing. So, okay. So it, everybody have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the BQ 1350. It's just a really cool machine. Um, gives you, gives you, and most of the stitches and stuff I showed you are also on a lot of the other machines. So if you have some of the, the other machines, you probably saw familiar things. So I will see you next week. I'm not sure what we're going to do next week. I haven't decided yet. I want to get to the um, quilting, edge to edge quilting on the uh, luminaire. So I'm hoping I can get, I have time this week, week to get that ready for you. Um, I have to play with it a little bit because I haven't used it yet. So. Okay, so everybody have a great day, and I will see you next week at 2 o'clock on Wednesday. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.